Joey Fisher was the Niners' priority signing this offseason. He was projected to go in round three. I mean, my, Mel Kuyper had the Niners taking him, I think, at pick 101. Small school guy uh, went to Shepard. Tested off the chart, 6'4", 296, 32-inch arms. Played tackle in college. Built like an interior offensive lineman. Probably going to get moved to the interior because 32-inch arms is a problem. That's yeah. really short. And frankly, it's, it's really short for guards, too. Like, if he could play center... That would be great because yeah. at center, I think he profiles kind of similarly athletically to like Creed Humphrey and some of the best centers in the league. But anywhere else, I, I don't know, man. You got it with those 32. How do you block Eric Armstead with 32 inch arms? That seems hard. He's talented. I mean, he's got, here's the thing he ran 4940, which is great at that size. Like, that's amazing. He also put up 40 reps on the bench, I believe. I mean, having short arms helps a little bit with that, but he's super strong. But yeah, I mean, he played in D2, he's never really blocked. A uh, high caliber of player. At best, we'll see him sophomore year, more like third year. We he might actually be in play. I think he's he's going to be a project. I think. Yeah, yeah. He's going to have to adjust to the talent level that he'll be facing in the NFL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I like everything about. I don't care about the talent level, honestly. Like, and the coach who was on with me yesterday made a good argument for just putting him at, at tackle. Like, hey, man. All the players that put it, the Niners put it right tackle, suck in pass protection anyway. Like, who cares? <laughs> I, <laughs> that's true. I just feel like even at guard, those 32 inch arms are a little problematic. Like, a, the way the NFL is now, on third down, a lot of the times those guards get singled up against, you know, edge rushers who are reduced inside. I mean, that's what Arden Keyed. A lot of teams have guys like that. And those guys are 6'5 with length. And if you're 32 inch arms, you can't even touch them a lot of the times. Yeah. So it, I heard that he took um, snaps at his pro day the fact that he didn't get drafted the fact that he'll be on the practice squad you can take as much time like he is a developmental player i know he's a little bit older but if he can learn to take snaps i feel like he could be a really good center and you look at jake brendel he was developed over like his entire 20 like, he, he was on practice squads for a long time and then eventually became a starter maybe but he played center in college i don't know if this guy could do it but it'd be interesting to see if he could do that didn't they just get Brendel four years? It's funny that yeah, the 49ers have a lot of these. They actually have a lot of depth at center and guard right now, like a lot of depth of like a lot of like developmental type centers and guards. They have, I mean, they got Zakel, they got Poe, they got this guy. They got Brendel, obviously. They brought in Feliciano. I believe his name Feliciano, if I'm saying it correctly. They got a lot of those guys, but mm -hmm. what they don't have is a lot of tackles. It's It's kind of. Even McKivitz is like yeah. kind of a guard tackle tweener, you got, know. You got Jalen Moore, and Come then on. you got Zakel, who's like I was like I, I even I asked John Lynch straight up before the draft, like, hey, do you see Zakel as a tackle? No. He's like, yeah, no, uh, he kind of has like Inside flexibility. Guy. We kind of see him as a guy who could play all five positions. It's like, okay, and that's McKivitz too. He's played guard for you, so you essentially have one tackle on your team. Yeah, it's a very important <laughs> position. I don't get that, man. And you we got, got a great coach. Harris. I don't know. I, I I don't think we had a very good answer for what the Niners learned from the uh, McGlinchey experience because I think it freaked him out. I think it freaked him out. From their perspective, man, he checked every box. He was their ideal right tackle. They took him with the ninth pick. They're never going to take a right tackle that high again. And he was a flop. He was not what they wanted. No Pro Bowls, no second contract. Like, what do they – so what do they do? Okay, we'll just – we won't draft the position. Like, uh, I don't know if that's a solution. You, you might want to update your what your profile is for a right just tackle. How about that? Better. Draft better. Yeah, but you just, just draft better. The coach yeah. says I will not put up with Latu slander just because Kyle's Fugazi third on reach history. <laughs> Fair. I'm not saying Latu's going to be like Akello or Trey Sermon. I did compare him to Trey Sermon. Let me take that away. I would say he's more like Bethard in the sense that you may have just drafted a backup in round three, knowing he's a backup. Like when they drafted Bethard, they were like, well, you need a backup quarterback. Yeah, not in round three. What the fuck? First and with Latu, it's like, well, our backup tried and lost the season for us last year. Like, no, 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 no. The, the head coach lost the season for you last year. Don't put that on Tyler Croft. Let so I'm, I'm just a little feel like, a little afraid that you drafted a backup tight end here. Let me clarify my position on Latu for the coach, who I like. Mm -hmm. I like when he's on your show. I really like watching him. But when it comes to Latu, like, for to his credit, he started as a defensive player. He doesn't have a lot of experience at tight end. I'm yeah. not saying that he's going to be bad. What I'm saying is he's completely raw at the position. Yeah. And so they're going to have to develop his technique in the blocking scheme. They're going to have to develop sure. everything for him. I don't mind and that. I, and I just think of him as developmental, yeah. 
Not that he's going to be just, bad, but they just yeah. have stuff to do to him. I just feel like with, with Kittle, like you got him in round five, and he didn't have much production, but he tested off the charts. And you got him in round five. Like, like Latu didn't even test off the charts, and you took him in round three. He should have been there in round five. And I know he, 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 he probably wouldn't have been because there was a run on tight ends. And the Niners essentially missed it. Yeah. He was at the tail end of it. I wonder if he was their top choice or if they, there was a guy they thought. Like maybe they thought they could take Darnell Washington, the dude from Georgia, who was dropping because of his knee. Maybe they were like, we, we don't care about his knee. We drafted Javon Kinlaw. Like we're, we're that team. We don't care. Yeah. And then he got taken. They're like, fuck. All right, who's next? Well, what about that? He went to tight end university with George Kittle. George Kittle has a relationship with that guy. Uh, really that's think, a lot of people were saying this. That's do you call. think Kittle actually had any influence yeah, in that's that good at call. all? I bet he did. I bet he did. If Kyle made the pick, you know, he went, I bet he went down to Cabo if that's if that's and McCaffrey case, was like, hey man, sign Sam Darnold. And Kittle was like, hey man, draft Cam Latu. And Kyle was like, bet. If you think that's true though, would, would Kittle really tell him to draft the guy that could replace him or would he tell him the guy that could He be? knows Cam Latu ain't replacing him. Right. Put it that way. That's what He's seen him work. He's seen him run that four, seven, eight. I'm sorry. Uh, F fullback. S, just put two tight ends on the offense. It feels gimmicky, man. You're not doing that much with, with, with uh, you. And plus, he's like the, the last of a, there's no more use checks. He's the last of a dying breed. 